There we go. Alright, so this is the one that you owned, right, Darian? This is new to me. I have not, uh, I played the first Crash Game Boy game pretty recently on stream for the first time. I hadn't played either of them. And, uh, it was very difficult, but it was better than I expected. It was a competent, it was just like a little sprite based 2D Crash game. And you know what? It worked. I just want to make sure I have uh, good levels before I uh, watch the intro or whatever. I assume this has an intro. I don't know if it does or not. All right. One, two, hello. That's fine. I'm really paranoid about it because if we have uh, if we have bad levels and I don't catch them, then it's that way for the entire stream, and it can it can ruin an entire stream. Link game. There's like uh, there's a there's a multiplayer, Atlasphere and Link Race. Okay. Well, I don't know what those are, and I don't have anybody to link with. So deep in the heart of hyperspace, in the Crash Bash intro arena place. That incompetent neocortex. He cannot do anything right. His last scheme to shrink the earth failed miserably. You've been a great asset to the cause of evil over the years, Entropy. He has? Thank you, my lord. That is why I trust you with the task of aiding me in universal domination. Great Uka Uka, I am honored, and I have the perfect scheme. Entropy sounded like Mercenary Tao from Dragon Ball, Kent Williams, doing his nasally bad guy voice. Which, it wasn't Kent Williams. It just seems like a role that he would get, if there were a Crash anime, for example. Okay, so we get, this is one of those games that gives us a million tutorials, as if we've never touched a video game before. I have my controls set up such that, uh, so the R button on the Game Boy is the, is the crouch, but I have it set up so I can play it PlayStation style over on what, the equivalent of the circle button. And that makes it feel, you know, pretty similar to the 3D Crash games. Uh, the sliding immediately feels nicer than it did in the first one. This feels more similar to the 3D Crash games. I'm saying that now, it's gonna bite me later, I'm sure. Also, like, uh... I guess I keep my abilities from the previous game. Or at least I keep the double jump, because I'm starting with that immediately. I don't have the super spin. Also got some uh, Crash 2 music. Which was very common in the previous game. They used a lot of a lot more Crash 2 assets than Crash 3. Allow me to harness my powers of time and space to peer into the future. Of course, since those wretched bandicoots keep thwarting us, the solution is to get them on our side. And I know just the fellow for the job. A new recruit? Indeed. Meet my secret weapon. I am en trance. Literally a fucking egg. Okay, so this is... Cr Crunch exists. This is after Wrath of Cortex. Crash, wake up. Coco and Crunch have been abducted. Find me a power crystal so I can look into what's going on. Hurry! Oh, this is still the same level. I, I guess. We're getting mid-level cutscenes in a Crash game. It is weird. Does, did any of the previous Crash games start with a double jump? Uh, well, I guess 
But Twin Sanity probably did, right? But, uh, I don't think... I, Wrath of Cortex, you had to unlock your powers the same way you did in Crash Warped, I believe. I don't, I, I don't know why I thought. Well, you can slide under those, so there must be something under them. All the, uh, I think all the post Wrath of Cortex, all the new style Crash games had the, all the abilities from the start. Did people have trouble understanding the first game, I wonder? I wonder why they felt the need to have all these tutorials suddenly, whereas the, the first game just kind of threw you in. Oh no, watch out, Crash! I've got you! Something is holding on to Crash! We need more power! This vortex, vortex must be the work of Entropy, I guess. I mean, it could just as easily be any of the weird scientist characters. We haven't seen Entropy at all since Warped. He just kind of came and went. I finally captured that infernal bandicoot! Oh, hello. That's the wrong crash. I finally got all you obnoxious bandicoots. Would you do the honors in trance? I, I don't even know how to voice in trance. I, he can be Eggman, sure. He can be Mike Pollock. That took almost all the power I had, Crash. Good job getting the power crystal before we were pulled into the vortex. But I'll need a lot more crystals if we're to put an end to Entropy's plans. That floating island up ahead will allow us to go to different worlds and find crystals. Hopefully we can find Coco and Crunch and stop Entropy. It is, he got Fate Crash. Which, for those unfamiliar with the deep, deep Crash Bandicoot lore, he is a, a joke character based off of a, like, a shitty Hong Kong Crash plushie, I believe. Laguni Tunes. Crash, in this water world, you will need to use your wakeboard to collect the power crystals. Really, the first level is a, is a, is a gimmick level. The waters are guarded by a vicious shark. Okay, so it's a combination of a gimmick level and... The levels where you run from things in Crash games, which are everyone's favorite levels, of course. And they can only be better by combining them in a sprite game, no less. It was definitely ambitious, I, I will give it that. I am going to not worry about the crystals, uh, about the gems, for the time being. This is probably going to be another case where if the game really blows me away, then maybe I could come back to 100% it. But I'm not expecting that to be the case. Oh, that's right, I can jump. Pretty sure this game has the rolling ball levels. That's good. I, I liked those. Pharaoh's Funhouse. With, uh... So either that was an emulation error, or else I can only get half of a red gem here. Okay. So we got Crash 3, setting and assets, and music. 
Oh, hello. Oh, and they actually got the, uh... They got the bonus platforms to actually move around like platforms, instead of having a, you know, five frame a second warp animation. Seems he'd sound like crying. Who who is crying? Is that a is that a crash character like CTTR? Well, shit. It's okay. I got him. Uh oh. There's that. Okay. Maybe maybe I was too uh, maybe I was too generous too early to compare the sliding to the crash PS PlayStation games. Looking guy. Oh, that guy in uh, Ninja, Tur Ninja Turtles. Isn't that the guy who's, uh, isn't that like the, the big bad, like Shredder's boss? I don't actually know what he sounds like. Fuck. As with the previous Game Boy Advance Crash game, you gain speed much quicker on slippery surfaces than you do in the in the console Crash games. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing. The ice physics were, uh, I might even say infamous in Crash. did, in fact, appear to be half of a gem. Oh, goddammit. I can't see a, a 2D Egypt level without thinking of the pyramid in Sonic and Knuckles. Uh-oh! We're fine. We're good. Despite my complaints about the sliding, it's still, compared to other Game Boy Advance games, it still controls nicely. It is, it is what a 2D crash game should be. Prince of Persia. Featuring half of a green gem. So this game definitely seems to draw more from Crash 3 as opposed to the first game, which had a lot more Crash 2 in it. I wonder if these games had different uh, directors or anything. Now this this makes me think of Aladdin. 
on the Genesis. Yes, I had the good one, the one with the sword. Rayman, there'd be like, uh, there'd be a hidden flag I need to crawl under here to activate. I want a game, what a uh, Rayman 1 remake, or uh, a game that followed the Rayman 1 design philosophy would be like in this day and age. It was strange, but it was also kind of interesting having to, uh, having to scour levels for said invisible flags just scope out areas that looked suspicious. This does seem to have the, uh, this has the fast monkey bar movement that uh, Insane Trilogy has, which I'm grateful for because it sucks when you have to go slow in a video game. I'm happy when I don't have to do that. Whoops. Did it transition to night partway through the level? I just caught that. director of every single Crash game has always been Jason Rubin. Interesting. Even despite how many times it's changed studios. Like Crash 1, 2, 3, all the way up to Mind Over Mutant Titans every single one? Crash, these Mayan ruins can only be traversed by using one of your favorite toys, the Atlasphere. Here we go, ball level. Super Crash Ball, go. Even the Titans games. That is bizarre. He must be a very hands-off director. Given how much... How different so many games in the Crash series are. Unless he's the one who felt the need for all the, like, uh, all the redesigns and everything. I can't imagine that, though. Uh-oh. Nope, don't want to go down there yet. This control's nice. I also haven't, uh, commented while I'm out there yet, but the overworld is a very strange choice for a Crash game haven't had that since, like, uh, Crash 1, and even then Crash 1 had more of a, uh, a map, as opposed to this game looks like it has more, like, uh, it's like, uh, like a, a Mario world. Even more basic than that, like New Super Mario Brothers, just the most, the most basic, most simple kind of, uh, level select overworld grid. It's not a bad thing, it's just very different for the Crash series. There aren't really any others that do that. Crash 1 had an overworld, but again, more of a complete map in that. Got some uh, sweet quarter pipes. Haven't heard any new news about the uh, Tony Hawk game in development. Is it a game or is it... No, it's a, it's a rem remaster, remakes of uh, Tony Hawk 1 and 2. Hopefully better than Tony Hawk's Pro Skater HD, which was, as most of us know, a train wreck. 
I am worried because last I heard it was, uh, well, it's an EA sp pr produced game, so it's, I think, Origin exclusive. Which is possibly enough to get me to not buy it. I, I don't know yet. We'll, we'll see. It's a, it's a hard sell for sure. It's better than being console exclusive, which could potentially hold back uh, Crash 4 from me. I'd love to play it, but not enough to spend, you know, $600 on a PlayStation 4. So there's a lot of games coming out that are in the air as to whether I will be able to play them. Splunky 2, at least, we have confirmed is going to be on PC shortly after the PS4 release, like within a couple weeks, reportedly. So that I know is coming soon. I don't know if you can tell I'm using the joystick for this. It's, it's a Game Boy Advance game, so it only really has the digital input. Seems to be working all right, though. Shit. I know people used to. Uh, I know. I know people who used to tape a quarter onto their D pads of handheld systems to make like uh, you know f faux analog sticks. I never felt the need. I, I, you know, grew up on NES, Super NES, PlayStation 1, before the controllers for that had analog. So I actually was, I preferred D-pad for the longest time. And I still might, given a controller that had a, a really, really good D-pad. After a point, they just kind of stopped having those. You know, the D-pads on controllers became an afterthought. Makes the D-pad hard to love in the modern day. I feel like I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through this whole level and be super attentive to detail. Scour everything and still miss a box or two. I, I know what's gonna happen. Shit! Feels weird using Analog Stick on Insane Trilogy. I think I did use the D-pad for a lot of the... Crash 2, at least. I think I stuck to the D-pad for a lot of it because it felt more precise for the speedrun parts. I might have switched to analog after a point. I remember finding out after I'd done almost everything in the game that uh, slide jumping was faster than running. So that I wasn't too happy about. I don't think it made a, a, a massive time difference though. Would have been a 12-hour stream one way or the other. This is a uh, quite a quite a first ball level. One oh nine. What I miss, man? Forget it. Wait, am I not saving? It says empty. Why does it say empty?
Uh, hmm. Maybe I have the wrong type of save set. See if that works. No? Oh, okay. I did a save state, so I guess I'll just I guess I'll just use those for this. I think it's just the emulator. We we've run into this before between uh, Battle Network and Pokemon. Different uh Different Game Boy Advance games use different save formats. And unfortunately, uh, Visual Boy Advance is not terrific at uh, automatically detecting them when a game starts. So I could figure out. I, I, I could troubleshoot it and uh, get it saving correctly. But I'll just, I'll just use save states. I might do this all in one stream, like I did the the previous Crash game. Even if we missed out on uh, on on what's his name, the 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 Mega Mix. It's still so incredibly incredibly bizarre to me that there's a canonical fusion of all those characters in the Crash universe. Very forgiving. It's not, I keep expecting these to be bottomless pits, and they're not. Oh, is Coco gonna be a boss? That'd be neat. There are just gems scattered about to f be found. It's definitely way less involved getting these, uh... These gem fragments. Compared to, uh, getting the gems in the PS1 Crash games, which were at the end of ob often very difficult challenge paths. This seems more along the lines of what I'm expecting from, uh, Crash 4. It's just gems being, you know, strewn about as collectibles here and there. forgiving crash level I've ever played. There are no pits. They're just... You can get back out of every pit with, like, a little bounce pad. There's a floor and everything. It almost feels insulting. is the baby crash game that everybody wanted. So do you had this and you also played the PlayStation Crash games, right, Darian? Oh no! And now I'm a genie. Now, we are now on the Magic Cart Carpet segment of Aladdin Genesis, and I have- I have laser vision. What- what- what is this series anymore? Oh. 
Oh, I ran. Either I ran out just in time, or that doesn't, uh... That doesn't save you from the, the coals. Well, what's down here? I want to see what this is first. Oh, it's just a it's just a, a happy save you pit. Well, we wouldn't want to put hot coals the entire length of it. That'd be mean. We got to give them a chance to get back up if they fall. Oh, I couldn't see him. Well, you know, mobile gamers are casual. We we got to appeal to the to the 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 casual easy game market with this crash. I don't I don't actually mind. I'm just taking the piss out of it. Have you tried that uh, that mobile crash game, Darian? That came out recently, right? The Crash Runner. I forget if it's 2D or if it's uh, third person. Like I think it's third person, like behind Crash. I, I just keep hitting save out of habit. See, other games usually show a message if the save fails. This one, I guess, does not. And I'm back to being a genie again. Now this is... This is so mobile game. It's a Temple Run clone. Doesn't look like anything special. I, I don't know what Temple Run is. You just you just avoid him until he go backs into a nitro. This boss fight looks exactly like so many rip-off mobile games. I mean, better designed than the, the shittiest rip-off ones, but even so. Or like something that would be on a on a plug and play. I guess these kinds of uh, these kinds of shooters are just the easiest kinds of games to design, so everyone does them. I'll just hang out down here. This seems to be working. Ah, oh, fuck! Just hang out low. Hang low and keep firing. That's the way to win. You can't hit me. He can't hit me down here. I'm actually safe. This is the. Ch oh no, no, I'm not. One nitro appeared that could have gotten me. Oh man, brainwashed again. Thanks for saving me, Crash. Good news, Crash. The crystals you've collected have allowed me to open up a new area of the island. So it's just a random floating island. Is the setting of this game. There's no explanation as to why it's floating or here or why all the crystals are on it. It's just a floating island in space. There she is. There's evil Coco. Oh, I don't want to slide. Do I? No, I, I don't want to slide under this. Is that the super slide? It doesn't look any different from the normal slide. Oh, I can't jump on that. This wasn't a Crash 3 enemy. This little monkey fella, he's new to this game. Actually, wasn't this, uh... 
I guess it could be like elements from the the jet ski levels. Now this seems more or less original to this game, this setting. Or was this in Wrath of Cortex? I think there was one or two like uh, volcano levels in Wrath of Cortex. Yeah, this is from that. I, I recognize the lava and the floating platforms. What? Aw, oh, you were just supposed to crouch, not slide, Mr. Crash. Pressing down seems to be a more reliable crouch than pressing the pressing the shoulder button. Okay, yeah, even it well It's odd. Sometimes even if you're standing still, it feels like it'll slide. But then other times pressing the crouch button does just crouch. Anyway, I was in a Ganondorf crew battle today, which is two character discords in Smash fighting each other. And I did bad. I, I, I'm not proud of how I did. I'm going to be streaming a me brawler one tomorrow. I was asked to host it, so that is going to be on this channel. God damn it. And we might do something else afterwards. I don't know yet. Jack mentioned he is going to be celebrating his birthday tomorrow, so... We don't yet know what is in the cards, or what the plan might be. More Morio. Yes, I will be bringing out Morio. hoping I do better than I did in the Ganondorf one. Because I've been playing friendlies all week long, and it just it didn't matter. I, I went up against a, someone who was very, very good at the game and just got my ass beaten. It's a bad matchup for Ganondorf, I think, but even so, I, I, felt, I felt bad about it. The uh, Me Brawler one is going to be against Jigglypuffs. Is that all of them? Yeah, that's all of them. Yeah, there's no explanation as to why the gems are in halves, they just are. Ah! Oh! I got hit by a monkey with a banana. Oh. Okay. I can get hit by little uh, little lava puffs. a bizarre enemy for a crash game. Still missing one box. There you are. Alright, so I'm getting like half of the gems in the levels. Barrel roll! No, 
Now it is your turn to use the Atlasphere Crunch, but be careful, Entropy has added some new dangers. Why, though? What's the difference? It's the same level, I'm just a bigger ball now. I guess because it was easy to just T-pose the characters. Actually, I wonder if this is, uh, if this is rendering in very, very basic 3D. Or if there actually are just enough sprites for every rotational direction of this character. Because that'd be a lot of sprites. It, ha it has to be, uh, it has to be rudimentary 3D. Just stick them in a T-pose. The Game Boy Advance can handle that. Is this what Coco does with her free time? Is just invent very basic things to keep Crash amused? Yeah, it's a big plastic ball. You get inside and you roll around, Crash. That's it. That's the invention. Have fun! Is that uh, Crash 2 Turtle Woods music? Oh, that's... I didn't see that. Oh, this is also a... This is a half pipe. What are those? Bamboo? His icon looks so happy. Look at that mug. Look at that big smile. I really can't tell if they're supposed to be barrels or just giant bits of bamboo. Be fitting with the theme. I just, you know, stick to walls. It's like the honey in Donkey Kong. It makes sense, don't question it. Assume they're toxic waste barrels. They look different than the ones in Crash 1 and 2, though. They don't have, like, the, the biohazard logos on them. You can tell they got this from Wrath of Cortex because of the abundant nitro crates in the level. I mean, it's not Twin Sanity levels of Nitro, but I remember them being, there being a lot of them on these types of levels. All this for one crate. No! Boy, they really expect a lot to 100% uh, these levels. These are long. This could have been a good mini game in a uh, crash bash style party game. Is like a race on one of these kinds of levels. Get to the finish first, Marble Madness style. I said this during our stream of it. I think Fall Guys had a great premise. Kind of an obvious one, I might even say. You know, a platforming battle royale. So obvious that perhaps even it was attempted once. Perhaps with a Mario game. But then shut down, because Nintendo hates new things. I 
I would love for a, uh, I'd love for a platforming game that was, like, competitive real-time racing, though. Without, you know, the, the, the gimmick physics of Fall Guys, but an actual platforming competition, like, you know, multiplayer Crash or Mario. It'd be a lot of fun. I guess I haven't hit any of the barrels yet to see if they explode. If they explode, then I guess they're, uh... They're like hazardous material for sure. If they just like smash crunch, then I, I guess that means they're bamboo. Oh, hello. That's a, that's a dangerous looking path. Is there anything on that path, or is it just nitros? Is the question. I'm gonna go check. Because there are a lot of a lot of alternate routes on these kinds of levels that are just shortcuts for uh, time trial purposes, high risk shortcuts. It is just a shortcut. Okay, there's no crates to get there. I'm looking at the, uh, I'm looking at the ops window, which I shouldn't be. I should be looking at the game screen, but, uh, it's just a better angle for the microphone if I'm looking at this one. What's over here? You know what? What are you? Uh, hmm. Well, Crunch exploded, but the rolling object did not. That didn't answer anything. I just have more questions now. Fuck! I wonder if Nitro's can insta-kill you, like in Twin Sanity. I doubt it. This seems to be more based off of the earlier games. Okay, well, I just lost all my lives. I'm no longer going to worry about the gem on this level. I gave it the old college try. finished Gravity Falls. Me and Jack watched it, I don't know, like a year and a half ago, maybe? Two years ago? And uh, we just stopped after a point because uh, Jack was not willing to watch the final few episodes. I think it got to a point where there was like uh, annoying romantic hijinks stuff that Jack doesn't like and the he was worried the ending was going to be really sad or hard to watch, or dramatic. Which, in his defense, there was a really hard to watch. Like, X character fails at romance, haha, -ha episode that we stopped at. So he, he wouldn't have liked that at all. But I watched the ending. It was alright. It was, uh,. It did, it was a dramatic arc, which, you know, you come to expect from that kind of show. It's one of those cartoons that has a continuity, has a dramatic arc going on, even though it is still, for all intents and purposes, a comedy cartoon. Which seems to be the direction a lot of shows are going, in terms of American animation these days, like Rick and Morty. I, I don't know how I feel about it. I think I prefer, uh, 
I prefer if shows are going to have a dramatic arc that they start that way. As with, like, Avatar. Maybe that's just me. I don't know if I can really even say that because there are shows like My Little Pony, Ursa, Itsura, a few anime series that are primarily comedic, but the parts that I'm most interested in are the storytelling, the occasional storytelling parts and the lore and everything. So I don't know. It's 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 a it's a case by case. Matter of taste, I suppose. Okay, here we go. Wait, did I adjust the screen like that? What? Uh-oh, when did that happen? How did that happen? I'm sorry, I completely missed that message. Well, you saw most of the level, due to me dying on it previously. Sorry about that. No, uh, my two monitors are different resolutions, so apparently when I moved the game window over to the other monitor, it messed with the obs. Wait a minute, why can't I go down? I cleared the level, I got the crystal. Okay. I guess I do have to do every level. comes to mind. That's the one that has all the, uh, like, the parodies of other series, like the fake Cell and Frieza in it, right? Which I didn't even know it was a comedy or a parody series. I just thought it was another shonen anime with, like, story arcs and everything. It's a balance, I suppose. If a show is too much focus on only dramatic narrative, and you don't really get a time, get any chance to, uh, you know, see the characters, be it in their everyday lives or ho however they might be presented, it can be hard to build character and make the viewer, you know, care about them. So I think both drama and a lighter lighter tone stuff are required on some level. And there are shows that are uh, that are pure drama that are very popular. It is a lot of them have a. Uh, I've been able to stick with a lot of them. That seems like a lot of anime that are being recommended to me these days. Like, uh, what is it, Erased, uh, Eden of the East. A lot of, uh, like, sad, uh, romantic, dr dramatic, romantic dramas without a lot of apparent humor to them. Are a lot of what I'm hearing about, and those, those aren't shows that really stick with me. Justice League, the cartoon, was dry as hell compared to 
like the original Teen Titans. It was like Teen Titans, what made it interesting was that uh, the characters had fun being superheroes. Not to the same, like, wacky degree as Teen Titans Go. It wasn't a joke, but... The Justice League are just so humorless. I want that. To the point that, like, Superman seems like he's... Oh, okay, I can just do that. That doesn't seem right, but I'll take it. Superman especially is just the most humorless character. It just... Seems like he's scolding anyone who's not taking the, 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 the all business all the time. Nothing but scowls on Justice League. I didn't watch Unlimited. That I I, I, I don't really like it when the, those when shows get too many characters. Again, makes it hard to really uh, really care about the individual ones. Give them the amount of screen time they need to develop. Teen Titans, the final season, was starting to do that as well, so it was probably good that it ended when it ended. Oh, oh missed one. Oh no, the shark got it. Well, I missed a box, so no gem on this level. holding the B button, which I believe is a constant acceleration. I think that's why I couldn't get into superhero shows as a kid. Yeah. I mean, what other ones were there besides Justice League? It was like uh, Batman the Animated Series. Which I also did. I hear good things about, but I didn't watch either. I think I had the same kind of perception about it. There was, like, uh, Batman Beyond, which was dystopian. That was kind of grim at times. Static Shock was one of the more lighthearted ones. Not to the degree of Teen Titans, but I, th I think I caught episodes of it now and again. Danny Phantom went completely the opposite way. I was interested in, like, the arcs that happened in the lore of the series. Unfortunately, it was a uh, Butch Hartman cartoon, which, uh, I don't know, I, sh I should watch it again, give it a chance, but Fairly Odd Parents did not hold up well at all, in my opinion. The humor is very pandering to kids. Magma Mania? Okay, back to Vesuvius. This is so Sonic. It was a slower Sonic, but... I, I don't like those lava puffs. Yeah, a crash coat a crash cartoon could have been interesting not more a cartoon cartoon than uh, than one with dramatic arcs granted I didn't like that Sonic got the Americanized Western cartoony renditions I never liked that variation of Sonic And I don't really like how much impact it had on the character as a whole. You know, the, the chili dogs. Because my favorite iteration of Sonic was Sonic X, which was... It, ha it had comedic aspects, for sure. But for the most part, it was, it was an anime. It had arcs after the first season. The first season was very cartoony, episodic. I wasn't crazy about that one. But after that, it had arcs, it had character development, it had it had a lot going on that was very interesting. And kind of showcased the best, most developed version of each of these, you know, little Sonic Mobian characters. 
Mostly. Not always. Knuckles was a butt monkey in uh, in Sonic X. I didn't I didn't like that. But Knuckles is kind of a butt monkey in canon anyway. He's the ha ha that dumb Knuckles always getting tricked. I don't like when that's characters. I don't like when there's a Meg Griffin, who just the joke is always that they're the butt of the joke. That's that's that's, that's just it's easy. Uh, okay, that's a time freeze crate. That is the kind of thing we'll probably see a lot of in Crash 4. Those kinds of uh, special level elements. Oh. Oh, this is straight up Wrath of Cortex. We got the level changing style in the middle of the level. I guess that's no different from, uh, like the Crash 3 you would get the the underwater levels that you would swap to a vehicle part way. This is kind of like that. Wow, that's it. I missed a lot. Every cartoon mascot has to have a favorite food. I guess. Do they, though? Alright, what's the evil Coco boss fight? Uh, it's gotta be on a vehicle. Is that all the bosses? Are on these weird vehicles? Okay, I got it. I forgot I could spin while I have the vehicle. So this is, this is a straight up Eggman fight. Dodge the attacks, wait for an opening, and then, uh, spin them. Uh, what are you? What do you do? Come on. Lower your defenses. I guess this makes more sense than the weird rabid Coco we got in the past. Oh, now I'm too far away. Damn it. Okay, we're good. Oh, Crash, thank you. How did you break out of Entrance's hypnosis? Coco rocking like, uh, like a rock band t-shirt. Or is that Ubisoft? Something strange happened when you were being pulled into the vortex, Crash. Coco saw someone in Entropy's secret base that looked like you. I'll try to find out who while you go collect more crystals. So this is the canonical introduction of Fake Crash it seems like. I know he appeared as like a cameo in the PS1 games. Like Crash 3, I think, was his first appearance. But he hadn't had any like story role or anything until now. Hold L and push A to jump even higher. Let me do another save state because I haven't done that in a while. Okay, now we're in Spaceland with evil fake Crash. Now it's Instanbull. Whoops. Oh, that's the super. Okay, so I have to hold L for the super versions of the powers. Okay, that's my that's my super jump. That's that's new for Crash. That's not something I've seen in any other games. Uh, Crash cannot climb ropes apparently. He can only go down them. 
That's bizarre. Go down. What are these rope mechanics? I either I'm not understanding something or these are just the strangest rope mechanics I've ever seen in a video game. If there was a place the game fell apart, it's here. It's bizarre and annoying enough that I'm not going to bother with all the crates on this level. He's gonna be the Dark Link. Here we go, against my better judgment, I will cross the rope gaps. Dark fake crash. That's so many layers of fake. That's like having a dark Wario. That's Waluigi. Is dar dark fake crash is Waluigi. It's a copy of a copy. Yeah, let's not let's not bother down here. I I've had my fun, or black thereof. Let's go this way. Is it just a life? Oh, okay. Uh, f oh no, that's a... I thought that was like a fire crate. It was just a fruit in front of a reinforced crate. It is interesting to see the uh, mishmash of level elements they use for these games. I wonder if they are just, uh, like, they have to be 3D environments that were, like, uh, they, had, they took, like, uh, pictures they made renders of and then uh, modified the palettes for 2D sprites. That's how I am inclined to believe these graphics came to be. Well, that there's a bonus with uh, ropes, so let's just, let's not do that. Let's do as little of this level involving ropes as possible and never come back here. Before this, I just wasn't willing to... I just wasn't willing to put the, put the time into the game. This level, though, this actually feels bad. These rope, these rope mechanics make no sense. What are you? Oh, that's the genie crate. Okay. But power-ups are like a Mario thing. You're not supposed- you don't need them, Crash. I guess Sonic had power-ups. Uh-oh. It was on that day that Crash opened his third eye, and he saw the world for what it truly was. Two-dimensional. And yea, did he say. Wow! Ah, lava! Cra Crash never learned how to climb ropes in PE class. Apparently not.
Come to think of it, has Crash ever climbed anything in a, in a Crash game? I, don't, I can't recall any ladders. There's the monkey bar section, so you can move horizontally while grasping things, but... Maybe it's just... Maybe, like, Sonic can't swim. This is the one thing Crash can't do, is climb up a vertical climbing surface. I, I'm not understanding the pun in that name. Oh, because personal. Now it's personal. That was a stretch. All these levels just feel the same. Can't even, like, change the color of the water or anything. Crash just keeps coming back to the same place. To jet ski in the shark-infested waters. The shark's had enough of it. Ambitious is a word I would use to describe this game. Maybe it's like the koi fish in Avatar. Crash just likes fucking with sharks. That's what makes it fun. Power crystal is located in space, Coco. You must use your spacesuit and rocket tug to retrieve it. The hell is a rocket tug? Entropy sent a huge fireball that will destroy the crystal if you do not move fast enough, but I've created Turbo Gaze to help you stay ahead of the danger. This is bizarre. Jet tug. Why not a jet pack? Now this is pod racing! Okay, so we had the strangest rope mechanics I've ever seen in a video game. Now we have the strangest vehicle I've ever seen in a video game. It's a life preserver attached to four rockets that tows the rider by a rope behind it. It is exa it is a pod racer, but impractical as fuck. I don't think I could effectively describe this vehicle to somebody. Oh, I have, a, I have a speed up. Oh, I missed the checkpoint. Man, I'd love to be able to shoot. Unfortunately, I cannot. I would much rather be in a spaceship as any sensible bandicoot scientist would otherwise be. I don't even understand what's hitting. Is is it the is it the pres the preserver? Sorry, the jet tug that's hitting the crates, or do I have to hit them? I guess it can be either. was like for this level. Mr. Lava Lava. Well, if it's anything like the entire rest of the Crash series, I suspect it was John What's-His-Name smoking a blunt in the office and not really giving a, giving a shit 
what the devs of the week decide to do with it. Yeah, man, that sounds like a cool idea. I don't know if it'll sell, but... I mean, anything's worth trying, right? Crash beat him up let's do it! Oh, you want to do a Crash Bash sequel? Let's put it on the DS and make it suck. Actually, I have no idea what was so bad about uh, Crash Boom Bang. That's probably something I will play just to satisfy my mor morbid curiosity about how exactly it was fucked up. Ow. No thanks. Okay, random rocket, sure. And now I am on this. not a whole lot of threat while riding this thing, other than the lava walls. It's a very risky life to get. I don't know why I keep, I keep getting like Sonic the Hedgehog vibes from this. Now I'm now I'm thinking of the lava cave. I guess just the, these kind of uh, these kinds of elaborate graphics combined with a uh, combined with a 2D platformer just makes me think of Sonic. Loves throwing you onto random vehicles. A lot like uh, Wrath of Cortex. Oh, what, what was there? There was a dude? Ow! I know there's a way to go up. Or there has to be, because there was that... Uh... No? Well, how, how, how would I get over there, I wonder? Oh, well. Oh, the super slide. That's how I could have done it. I keep that guy blends into the background and I never see him. So have you 100% of this, like all the all the relics, everything, Darian? There we go. I'll bet this leads to a uh, half of a gem. I don't like the lava pits, though. Those make me uncomfortable. all the gems at least okay now there's a spear fella I gotta watch out for he's right up ahead well not a spear a fire breathing fella and I'm in another one blended into the background
what were some of the levels that were uh, the killers. The... The jet tug and the the jet ski levels don't seem like they would be fun at all to try to 100%. Okay, there's that guy, there's the bird, and then there's another guy. Ah! I'm struggling way more than I should with this. One of them was a rolling ball level. Those are pretty unforgiving in terms of just the sheer number of crates. And also how tight rolling between the nitros can be on those levels. Okay, there's that guy. There's that, and there's him. Now I can't wait for the next guy I'm not going to see to suddenly kill me. Oh good, it's the end of the level. Slip, slide, and sphinx. Oh, uh, hmm. Interesting uh, water sprite. Clearly two dimensional. <laughs> that looks challenging. trying to do this, aren't I? If this were a 3D crash game, I'd feel much more confident sliding, but it's not. how low I can go in the water before drowning. It is very difficult to see the enemies in this game due to the lack of, uh, the lack of, like, outlines on the sprites or anything. And a lot of them are very light-colored palettes on a light background. So the game looks nice, but in terms of practicality, it can... I'm having a lot of trouble making out enemies at times. And now I'm just, I'm just eating ass. There we go. this as a checkpoint. So how long is this game? Is it the same as the previous one, like uh, 20 levels? Like, we have the three evil bandicoots, and then I would assume Entrance and Entropy?
I keep not seeing the Uku, uh, Aku Aku crate. All right, speed run time. Five whole areas. Okay, so that's kind of what I figured. And we've had I th four or five levels per area. I don't remember. Oh no! Alright, I guess that count. I don't know, I assume that counts as a checkpoint, even if I don't complete the bonus level. Oh, that's not even instant death. That was almost bad. Uh, maybe it is bad. I can't get through now. Okay, that worked, apparently. Those are spikes. Or spears, rather. This game kind of hurts the eyes. I guess this is both well, because it's an ad Game Boy Advance game. Which, after a point, or before a point in the console's lifetime, were made very, very bright. Because, uh, the Game Boy Advance was not backlit. And so they tried to compensate for that by making the coloration really stand out. You can see it on the Super Mario Advance games as well. Any, any early Game Boy Advance games tended to have those really, really bright colors. I didn't notice it in the first Crash game. Maybe I just wasn't paying attention. Hello. Fascinating. What did he do? He's he's waving something at me. I can't tell what he's attacking. Or what he's attacking me with. It's like he's waving a fan or something. It's also really hard not to get too close by accident. platforms are a little wider than they appear. Ah! Oh! Gotta deal with Olmec dropping shit on me, on top of everything else. Oh, there's stuff down here, too. Uh, it's not like there's any stakes to getting a game over here. I 
How come the fake crash gets like four hits? I get one. I've always only gotten one. Or else I have the masks, but I don't. Stupid fallen rocks, making it so I can't stand around easily. Fake crash is stashing masks. That could be it. You could have invisible, uh, invisible uka uka protection. Uh, what hit me? That's not fair. I wish this was a little less isometric. So that it were easier to tell where exactly I was standing. Got him! Entrance, you blundering idiot! That was not Crash, it was some sort of fake Crash! How was I supposed to know? He fooled you two! Besides, they will never find our hideout. Not in a million years! I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not up for Eggman today. Good job, Crash. With a few more crystals, I'll be able to open the vortex to Entropy's hideout. Oh, there's the, there's the super spin. That blasted hedgehog! There's Entrance, okay, so I'm guessing Entropy is the final boss. In, uh... Salvador Dali world. Since I've already established that I'm not going to be getting all the gems and everything, I'm just gonna kind of, uh, I'm gonna move, move pretty briskly. Love all those nitros on these ball levels. Gotta have lots of nitros on the ball levels. I don't remember, can, are you even able to get masks on these levels? Or are you just, you always only have one hit, and everything's an instant death? I guess, okay, so Crash got exactly one ball level, and then Crunch just took over in the balls. Because, I don't know, they wanted they wanted to give Crunch a reason to have levels. Maybe Crash liked being in the ball. I don't like these. I don't like stopping and waiting for lasers. You think he's dizzy? Shit.
checkpoint. It's such a length of these levels before you get a checkpoint too. I like I like the gameplay. I like I like this uh, I like these kind of ball mechanics. It's just so unforgiving actually getting through these levels. There we go. Not that even that is going to save me because uh, I have to worry about running out of lives, which I don't usually in crash games. That never happens in the other Crash games. The, well, the original ones, up to like Wrath of Cortex. The console crashes. I wonder if they're just, uh, I think lives are just scarcer in this game. Or it could just be they're, these games are more difficult. The Game Boy ones. Well, I'm glad the arrows are here. I would get, I would get so lost. This seems like a mechanic that would be suited to a Donkey Kong game. Like, this is something I, I think Donkey Kong 64 could have had in it. Just a big bamboo ball. Ugh. They already hang out in barrels all the time. Checkpoint. No! No! We're good. Considering how the previous level sucking lies out of you like an arcade machine. Yeah, it's difficulty. I guess they were less forgiving than in the 3D games. Because they figured, well, it's easier to move in 2D. You have one a whole less dimension to keep track of. So we gotta up the difficulty to compensate. Which, again, I think I would have liked these as a kid. It would have kept me coming back. And given that it was on handheld, I probably would have even 100% of the games eventually, but... Boy, it would have taken a while. I almost completely missed that Nitro. Down to one life again. I don't even know which of these two is supposed to be the harder route. Probably this one because of all the nitros. Yeah, definitely this one. Just stop. Just say put, crunch. I needed that. Not too fast. I, I scared go fast. No want go fast. Oh, this is a half pipe. I can't, just because of the perspective, I can never tell when I'm in a half pipe or a quarter pipe. The game wants me to go fast, but I don't trust it. It would have sent me right off a cliff. Stupid game. Eruption disruption. How many themes have we seen in this game? There's been like uh, six or seven of them. I've had a lot of repeats. And all of them are, of course, from previous Crash games. Save for the 
the gimmick levels, the vehicle levels. For the first time in a Crash game, I'm going to do a bonus, not because I need all the crates, but because I need lives. And bonuses tend to have lives. Or not. Oh, I would like to get that. Oh well. Can I go up here? I can. Oh, uh, what was that? It's like the the potaboos in Mario, the fireballs. This is the part of the game where I have to get really focused because- WHAT?! Wait, what, what, huh? I walked through it! How did I walk straight through the exit without entering it? I, I, I like, I, I walked into it and I looked away from the screen because I wanted to rest my eyes from these fucking colors. And I was walked right off the other side, instead of going into the level exit. Hello? I... You have to jump? It's not low enough to the crates to walk into. Also, it's bizarre how... So, they give you an overworld with branching paths, but the branching paths mean nothing. I just beat it... I beat that level, but I'm not allowed to go down because I have to go to this other branch and beat this level first. Which begs the question, why offer branching paths Oh no, it's ropes. Why offer branching paths if you're not gonna let the player take any of them? Do you remember these ropes being really awkward and weird, Darian? Because they definitely are awkward and weird to me. No, I wanted to die. Let me die. Let's rock the cassava, which I'm assuming is a place in Egypt or something. That's a nasty start to a level. I don't want to go back to that. How I couldn't see below me. How was I supposed to know where to land, game? Don't drop so far, Crash. You don't need to go that far down. 
sweet checkpoint. Yes! D what? Oh, that, that was an exclamation, not a bounce crate. I thought I was gonna bounce off of it. Do I even want to hit that? What is that? That's crates. What? He can't even hold on for long. He starts sliding down on, on his own if you hang there. Crash really does have no upper body strength. No, please. Uh... Where was the fire? The fireball had fallen past me. Not past enough, though. And I can't jump off of those. You know, everything was going pretty swimmingly until the rope levels. Then it was just, it was kind of just all downhill. Is this what other people like, feel like, playing Crash games for the first time? I would, did, did, Invincible didn't matter, dead. I think I've even seen, like, a, a Hong Kong bootleg game that didn't let you climb up ropes. Yes, I can. Oh, I gotta... Wait, no. Hold on. Can I... I'm gonna hit the nitro if I slide in there, right? Uh... Okay. I guess I was supposed to do that. I guess that's what the mask was for. So you just... You take the hit. Unless I can change directions while sliding. No, I cannot. Well, I have no idea where I'm gonna land, so... I have no choice but to trust the game that I can go straight down and live, which has proven not to be trustworthy in the past. Okay. Well, if I'd gone down to the wrong spot, I would have fallen through there and died. Fortunately, I did not. I was lucky. can't even skip the level, despite the overworld design making it really seem like you'd be able to skip a level because of the branching paths, you cannot, in fact, skip levels. What am I at? I'm at five lives. I think there's a checkpoint coming up. There it is. And then the magic carpet. I need that just in time to lose it. That's such a narrow point to get that mask. That you're almost sure to lose it immediately. These are some narrow spots to be using this doing this magic carpet shit. This is like flying a magic carpet through a collapsing lava-filled cave. That just sounds unpleasant. Who would do that? Who would put that in a video game? What sadist?
Next, you're gonna give me a level where you play as a lion, and you can't actually complete the level because there's a glitch in this particular version of the game. That would be crazy. Oh, those are fire vents. Why are there fire vents in the floors of Arabia? Why? I okay. I knew why I dropped. I just I, I keep thinking that because I can fall onto these that I can jump above them, and I can't. There was a version of the Lion King that was uncompletable because there was a part of a level that was fucked up in this particular version of the game. I can't even get the life that I break open. Impromptu checkpoint. It does almost it does feel almost like a crash maker level. Like maybe it's not that bad. It's not first time Babby's first level bad. But there's some very questionable uh there's some questionable game design choices, as I've pointed out. Well, I am now on my last life. Once again. I will just have to be extremely cautious. And you don't even get a bounce. Even if you have a mask, you're just dead on the lava. Or on the hot coals. Maybe I, maybe I lost the mask last time on that fella. Decided this was okay. Is this why it was so bad to 100% the insane difficulty? It takes a lot for me to say that about a crash game. Yeah, you just you don't get a bounce, you don't get anything. You just it's instant death on the coals even if you do have the mask. Because I've said this before, I, growing up, didn't consider the PlayStation Crash games particularly hard. So I was kind of surprised when, uh... Insane Trilogy came out and everyone was, like, uh, saying they were having a ton of difficulty with them. Making Dark Souls comparisons. Granted, I grew up on NES games, so... I was playing, like, Mega Man, things like that. Rayman was a crazy difficult platformer. More fair than this, I will say. It was very difficult, Rayman, but it was well-designed difficult. I even found, like, uh... I found Mario 3 harder than the Crash games. J 
Just mostly because you had to do it in one sitting. At least on the NES. Super NES was more forgiving. Alright, here we go. And just lose it immediately, because there's not a whole lot you can do otherwise. Mario 2, even. All three of the original Mario Brothers, just because you had to do them in one sitting, could be uh, very challenging games. Back at those times. At those... Back at, at my times. Those times. Those my times. Back when we drank my ties. See how small that window was that I had to get down to hit that nitro crate before I would have been caught in the explosion. That was a few frames, if that. Where am I going? What am I doing? Caught Nigel. I'm fine. Oh no! Nope. Don't fall, Crash. What are you doing? He was hanging on the edge of the on the edge of the thing, but he was not able to move right on it. I was holding right and he was not able to monkey bar. That was a bizarre place to get caught. This seems like a good thing to get, as long as I don't die in the lo in the coals immediately following the getting of it. I keep going past it. How? How can you consistently get through these? There there has to be something I'm missing in regards to the ropes. Because as far as I've been able to tell, my only options are to slide down rapidly or to jump. jump. The R button does nothing. If I hold up, so I'm holding up right now, and I'm not sliding down. If I let go, then his arms start to get tired, and he slides down on his own. And if I press down, I slide down immediately. And I don't have a lot of control of how far I slide down. And my only option while on the rope is to jump. I can't, like, reach over to the next rope. This is just a bonus level. Look at this shit. And I lost my mask. I thought I could jump off of them again. Well, this is A level. This is an experience for the scrapbook. Yeah. 
Uh, I didn't do the double jump. No, I'm definitely not 100%ing this game. That was pretty much off the table as soon as these ropes appeared. That fire keeps getting me because I expect it to fall to the ground below, but it hits just the little just the little edge and is high enough for the height of the fire to tickle Crash's feet. So I get the I get the mask, and then I cannot go low enough to uh, destroy the genie, and I lose the mask anyway. It's the fact that the projectiles come out of Crash's head is part of the problem. Okay, I actually kept the mask this time. I just I avoided the genie. Here's the one I have to get down to the real fast. Nope, not fat, not frame perfect enough. Apparently, I mentioned this I think in the previous Crash Game Boy Advance, the huge adventure stream. The Game Boy Advance is 60 frames per second. And obviously a very small resolution because it's a handheld system, but it seems bizarre that they would go... I have zero lives already? Really? Well, I have exactly one shot at this sequence. I'm alive. I made it over that particular jump. That was the jump. I've not made it this far yet. Life. Oh, no, I have seven lives. Okay, no, that was for the... That was the bonus score. Save state. Thank you. There's a Coco level with the, the ring tug jet. Tug my dick. I don't care. Whatever it is. I'm done with this game, but I'm four worlds in. Damn it, I'm gonna finish it. Uh, is there anything interesting for the 100% ending to this game? I guess I should get the regular ending first. Like, uh... We didn't get to see Mega Mix in person in Huge Adventure because that was the 100% ending boss. I'm curious if there's anything like that in this game, like a special character or something. Game Boy Advance does not do 3D space well. It's really hard to tell when you are or aren't hit by something. Other than your life going down. And again, I have no, uh, no projectiles. No way to shoot down all of these space mines. Isn't spaced out the level of an aim in Crash 2? It might be. What were the, what were the World 5 levels? There was, uh... Pack Attack. Rock It. Those were the two jetpack levels. And I don't remember what the two space station levels were called. One of them might have been called Spaced Out. Or was that the... No, the, the, the bonus level for Crash Warped was uh, Future Tense, I believe. In Insane Trilogy. That Nitro probably would have insta-killed insta me. I would venture a wager. This is already such an improbable scenario to go through once. So we're to believe that, once again, a crystal's been found in space 
And once again, Entropy has fired a giant fireball to attempt to destroy the crystal. While Coco uses her jet tug to outrun the fireball. This is a very specific situation that we're now to believe has happened on two occasions. My, my eyes really are getting tired looking at this game and just how bright it is. And it's not even the worst defender among Game Boy Advance games. Oh, you get nothing for 100%ing this. Oh, that's e that makes it even more worth it. You don't even get, like, a special cutscene or dialogue or anything. So as you might imagine, flying behind a life preserver attached to rockets connected by rope, this is not the easiest control, easiest to control thing in the world. There's a part in Jack 2, maybe no, it's Jack 3 where Daxter must, uh, ride a ballistic missile. And I'm pretty sure he, he has more control over that than, uh, Coco Bandicoot has over this device that is intended for transportation. I, I don't know when I'm avoiding shots, when I'm getting hit by shots. When I move, it takes, it's like a second before I actually move because of the, la the the delay of the rope actually pulling her there. And I missed that checkpoint. So, uh, rip. Makes me wonder why this gimmick never made a return. Oh, just wait for Crash 4. We'll see, we'll see how many gimmicks that game has. I missed my life. So because that keeps respawning every time, I wonder if that means I'm not I have I've been missing it. Or if they do just respawn every time you play the level, unlike the platforming levels where it's uh, one and done for the one-up crates. I need that. I missed it again. You don't even get a good respawn screen. You just appear. Where's where's the funny death animations? So you prob you probably surmise this just looking at it. I am controlling the I'm controlling the the rocket preserver, not Coco directly. So I move and then by pull of the rope, Coco moves like a second later. It is extremely unwieldy. Still have one more area after this too. Oh great. And you kinda have to just do this to speed up repeatedly. Similar to the the surfboard in Crash 2. There's no way to uh, hold a button and be continuously sped up. You just have to you just have to mash it. Did I get the checkpoint this time or was it not a checkpoint this time? I got it. I 
that. I'll take every one I can get. Avoid the nitro. Thankfully, there's only, like, two of them in this level. And not an entire minefield like the, like the ball levels. King 2 Uncommon. Now, is that death down there? Or do I just sl slip slide around? I wonder. No, I just slip slide around. This is totally Sonic. I remember the uh, water streams in the pyramid levels. Or, was it, well, there was sand streams in Sonic, I guess. I'll take this over impractical, non-functioning ropes any day. Especially since the water, which traditionally is a drowning instant death in Crash games, allows me to just, like, use a mask and come back afterwards. Opposite the hot coals, which are an instant death regardless of your masks. That is just completely the opposite of the console Crash games. Give me five more levels like this, please. No more ropes. No more jet tugs. It was really the ropes that were that were just killing me. For the longest time. Whoa. Oh, oh, oh. For the longest time. I shouldn't have done that. I'm fine. No, I'm not. I'm alive. I'm fine. Game's giving me a headache. I'll give it that. I had a little bit of a headache last night, unrelated to this game. So either it was a premonition that I would be playing this game, or I've just been having headaches recently, lately. Alright, invincibility. Always gotta have invincibility just in time for the pits to appear. Alright, let's crack an egg. Yes, we've made it to Entropy's secret base. Entrance, you fool! They found us! He-Man! It's just, it's Skeletor. Skeletor is mercenary Tau, is Entropy. DESTROY THEM! Should have taken a million years to find us. How? Time does not pass in the Vortex. I had all the time I needed to find you. Crash is scarred from this experience. Utterly. Utterly scarred. He's been in the void for centuries, millennia, searching for this egg. Yet he does not age. You have one last chance to stop them. Do not disappoint me again! Destroy all bandicoots. Well, okay. It's, he is just, he's an egg. Well, can I spin him? No, that'd be too easy. You don't even get good, uh, where's the thwap? Where's the, where's the satisfying sound effect from Crash beating the shit out of somebody? It just happens. There's nothing. This is just a shitty version of K. Rule. Look, he'll hop across the screen. He's not even gonna summon cannonballs or anything. He just does little hops, he throws his crown, and then you whap him. Oh, there's a part two. This is it? I just knock him around. It's Pong. What is this fight? 
Ah, uh, what happened? Lava fell on me. This is some this is some lame sound design in this game too. The lack of any contact sound effects when you hit an enemy. The just listen to that sound when he retracts the line. Oh, that's a big jump. At least the music is pretty intact, given that they're going from the PlayStation to the Game Boy. Advanced, but... Oh, that's that's what happened. Fake Crash is down there waiting. Oh, he can, he can do stuff if I'm above him, I guess. Oh, no, please. He's not even the final boss. Did this need to be multiple phases? I think Entropy would have had a little more fanfare in Crash 3, instead of just being the World 3 boss that you kind of punk out with relative ease. So if I stay close to him... What is- How am I gonna avoid all that? So this is a, uh, this is a very demanding boss, the second phase, with a very easy and tedious first phase, first phase, that you have to go through every time you'd like to attempt the second phase. You know what I do in cases like this? Save state. He doesn't deal any contact damage, it's just the... It's just the, the projectiles.
And there, I... Maybe I can spin them? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That was a mistake. I didn't mean to do that. I accidentally changed the window size, and that's gonna mess with the... That's gonna mess with OBS. Is... It's, is the save state not gonna work? When I try to load it, it crashes. Oh, it worked that time. Wait, which which one is this? There we go. Well, I might not be able to do that if it's going to be... No, I cannot spin them. If it's going to be that unstable... The game does seem to want me to suffer. Were there... was this the last, uh... These were the only two handheld crash platformers, right? I don't believe they did any others. Well, except there were handheld versions, quote-unquote, of, uh... What is it? Mind Over Mutant? One of the others. Which, a handheld version of a console game is basically a completely different game. I believe this was the last uh, dedicated handheld crash game. Or crash platformer, rather. There was like uh, Crash Boom Bang, the party game. Which you definitely want to put a party game on, the, on a handheld console. So that, you know, more than one person has to buy it to play the game. That's how you ensure sales. Although there was probably there was probably download play. That was the case on most uh, most DS games that featured multiplayer. So I just have to get far enough for him to fire his things and me to avoid them. don't have a lot of room there. Just wasted one of my two mas masks immediately. This really is like an Eggman fight. First, I'll hop around for a bit, and if that doesn't get the hedgehog, I'll fire a grappling hook. And if that don't work, I'm out of ideas. No, oh, there's so many. Get down there. Get lava.
I can't move fast enough. I gotta get so far to dodge the bullet hell. Get got. Get lava. One more, please. Stable, and I'm gonna do it anyway. Get got! Get hard boiled! No! I can't defeat those wretched bandicoots myself! Well, he admits it. Good job, Crash. You've rescued the other bandicoot from entropy and defeated Entrance. Too bad Entropy got away. If only we had all the gem shards, I could reopen his space vortex and you could go after him. Oh. Oh, so that was the final. Well, it is only four areas, and then you have to get all the gems to unlock the fifth area. Alright, well that works for me. I don't need to fight no Entropy. Like he said, he can't handle us by himself. He's He lost. He's doomed. Which one was harder, I wonder, between that and Huge Adventure? I can't- I pretty much gave up on trying to slide in this game because it ended up- it, it was basically the same as in Huge Adventure. And I had a lot of trouble with it there. I think I would probably would have liked this one a little bit more just because uh, looked a little bit nicer, had, uh, had the ball levels. Susan Rude. Is that who we have to blame for this? I would have liked it as a kid. I also would have found it incredibly difficult, like I... I think I did Rayman, but... Boy, they pulled no punches with these. I'm gonna look into Crash Boom Bang on the DS and see if it has any amount of single-player content. Just because I'm really curious how bad that game is, and in exactly in what ways is it bad. I mean, it's a DS game, so it has to have something you can do by yourself, right? If I do another Crash solo stream, it will probably be that. To sate, to sate my morbid curiosity. There's also the... There's also the, the Crash racing games on the, on the mobile. And I know there are mobile emulators, but that's not something I've ever looked into. I don't think I will look into those. Nitro-fueled comes out on Steam, then uh, probably get that and play it. How long ago did it come out? It's out on the Switch. I believe it is a year exclusive on the Switch and Xbox? Or is it PlayStation? Or maybe it's already out on Steam and I just haven't bothered to get it yet. I don't remember. I'll have to look into Nitro Field as a potential... Uh, potential stream yet. I also got other games that I could conceivably do solo, like Croc, but uh, I don't know how many streams we're going to be doing. It sounds like Jack is going through some things, so uh, streams may end up being scarce for the near future. We'll have to see. We're going to we're gonna play it by ear at this point. This isn't, this isn't infinite credits, right? Once again, I've not been paying attention. It might have, like, cycled twice by now. So I'm just gonna press A. Hold L for a burst of speed. Okay. So yeah, L is just the super ability button. The, the super jump is neat. That, that was new to this game. I'll take it. The pointless save. Wait, did it save that time? 
It did. Okay, so me closing and reopening the emulator was able to actually save the game. I got five gems during that playthrough. Wait. What are these? I have to... I, I guess I have to get all the all the green gem shards, the blue gem shards, and the Shiko and Jewel shards in order to go through these respective uh, portals, whatever they are. Well, that's enough for me. I, I played the game. I saw what it was. It was neat. I don't feel the need to go back to it and play more of it. I'm done. I got my handheld crash fill. So, uh, that was those two games. Uh, I will be streaming the Smash Brothers Brawler and Jigglypuff crew battle tomorrow at about 1 o'clock, our time, Pacific. And I don't know what else we'll be doing, if anything, tomorrow. So that's in the air. So, hopefully, we'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.